So our next topic, we're going to talk about entitlements. <clears throat> now remember, you can default a certain SLA onto an entitlement record, and then entitlement records are assigned to your accounts, okay? So basically your customers. So entitlements, um, this defines the kinds of support your customers are eligible for, okay? And again, there could be an SLA record associated with it. Um, entitlements will control the terms based on hours or number of cases. So you, if you want, need to, you don't have to use this feature, but um, basically you might say, I'm gonna set up an entitlement for goal level support and goal level support, they get 100 hours of support a year, okay? And then as they use it, we'll dwindle that down. And then the entitlement will track how much do they have left, okay? Um, this entitlement record can be very based on products or services that the customer has purchased. So maybe it's only applicable if they bought a certain type of product or service from you, or it might be a broad brush kind of thing where oh, if they call in for support on anything, this entitlement is in play. Um, so you can restrict it to certain products and services that they bought. You can also restrict it for maybe specific contacts at the company. So only if Jim or Joan call in, will we give them support and use the entitlement. If anybody else calls in, they don't get support. So you can restrict it based on people. And you can also restrict it based on the channel of support. So again, if they're call, calling in, maybe we support them. If they email, maybe we support them. Um, but maybe if they, if they submit a case, or I'm sorry, a case via the portal or the internet, the web, um, we support them. But there may be things like, no, you don't get phone support. This is only email and web support. So you can, again, restrict it based on the support channel. Um, just a couple of important things. Um, start and end dates are very important for these entitlements. So think of it kind of like a contract, your, your support contract. So start dates and end dates are important. They must be activated. So when you create them, they're kind of in a draft mode. We'll talk about that in just a second. Um, you can assign an entitlement, a default entitlement per customer. Um, and then once the entitlement does expire, meaning the end date has been reached, there is a renew button on the top of the form to uh, basically renew it. <clears throat> With that kind of leads us to this uh, life cycle of entitlements. So as they're created, um, they go from draft to waiting to active to expired. So draft means you just created it. Um, once you uh, uh, kind of activate it, then if, as long as the start date is not reached yet, so you can set up them in advance, then it would be in a waiting mode. But once that date has arrived, then it becomes an active entitlement. <clears throat> and then of course it expires after the end date has been reached. And then you can also just cancel an entitlement and that would be done manually. Okay, this is the entitlement screen. I'm actually gonna flip in and just show you here in, in another version of CRM. So let's go to entitlement. So this is the actual, a different uh, look probably than what we have been in. So we are now just in the unified interface of the latest version of Dynamics 365. And if I go to entitlements, you can have as many entitlements set up as you'd like. I have one in here just called support test right here. So pretty simple to set up. You're just going to give it a name. You're going to give it a customer. So that's an account in CRM. There's our dates, a start date and end date. Um, and are we going to restrict support based on entitlement terms? So in this case, we're saying no. So if somebody calls in and they have an entitlement, are we restricting them based on the terms? Like have they used their 100 minutes already? Um, it would actually stop us at the case entry and say, hey, they don't have any more minutes. In this case, we're saying, ah, we'll keep letting case entry occur, even though they might have gone through their minutes. Um, and is this the default entitlement? So a client can have more than one entitlement, but you can make one of them the default. The terms is probably the most important thing here. Um, so if you are going to be tracking that, you can have this based on the number of hours or the number of cases. Okay. So the number of cases, that's pretty simple. So if we give them, you get 20 quote unquote free support cases. If you start resolving or putting cases in, it goes from 19, 18, 17, 16. Um, so you see here the total terms. This, this example here, we're doing hours. So this is 240 hours. 
<clears throat> um, actually, that might be minutes. Actually, I think it's minutes. 240 minutes, so you would translate that into minutes. And this is how many minutes they have remaining. So no entitlement has been used on this yet. Okay. Um, and then the other areas here, like this product subgrid, we would add a record in here if we were re restricting support against this entitlement for a certain product the customer has purchased. That would mean you'd have to set up products in Dynamics 365. If you leave this blank, it's kind of a broad brush thing. Meaning, yep, the customer has this entitlement. It doesn't matter what product they're calling in on. If you've ever noticed the out-of-the-box CRM case form, um, there's an area for what product are they calling about. And that's there so that it can check against any entitlement that you might may or may not be um, restricting uh, based on product. You have your uh, contact list over on the right. So in this case, we are restricting it. Only these two people from this company can call in and get support via this entitlement. Okay, now if we left this subgrid blank, it'd be the broad brush thing. No matter who called in with this company, we would support them and it would be going against this entitlement. And then the last layer here is that entitlement channel. We're not restricting that at all here, but again, if we added records to this, we could say, oh, it's only gonna be email and web. If you do call in via phone, that doesn't count against the entitlement. So pretty easy to set up. Um, let's go back to uh, the PowerPoint here. This just talks about exactly what we just finished talking about here, basically setting up the entitlement record. Uh, one of the cool things you can do is um, there's a tab on the entitlement record that shows related. And what that would basically do is show you all of the cases that were related to that entitlement. So again, if we gave them 20 cases in a year, um, this one here looks like they have 19 remaining. Okay, so we gave them 20 cases, we have 19 remaining. That would probably mean they have one case that has gone against this entitlement. And if I go to that related tab, that will show me the case that was related to that entitlement. So you can look at that and say, all right, yeah, yeah, you used you used one case up and this was, it was a case called issue with a keyboard. Okay, so it's kind of a neat little feature there. Um, when they're used on cases themselves, so this is a case print screen here, but there is a field on there called entitlement. And that will default in if the customer has a default entitlement associated with them. <clears throat> so that may happen automatically. And don't forget there may be an SLA associated with that entitlement. I didn't show you that field, but on the entitlement setup, there's a field that says, what's the related SLA? So that might happen automatically as well based on this entitlement.